In this video, we are taking a look at the best Linux distributions for servers. I show you my favorite ones and explain some of the major differences and what you need to consider when you want a reliable and well-supported Linux system for your home lab, company, or even enterprise environment. So let's get started. Note, in this video we will focus on the most commonly used and widespread Linux distributions, which are my personal favorites that I use on my own Linux servers and for various projects. But that doesn't mean that these are the only options you have, because in the Linux world there are always good alternatives as well. But the distributions that I'm going to cover in this video are definitely the biggest ones and unless you have very specific requirements they will all do a great job. And they are also the most common Linux distributions that are covered by any IT certification trainings, because these are the ones that you're likely seeing in the industry as a Linux server admin, for example. So that's, in my opinion, also a very important factor. By the way, speaking about Linux server administration, if you want to know how you can easily manage remote access on all your Linux servers, then take a look at the sponsor of this video, Teleport. Teleport is an open source access proxy to securely manage all of your servers, no matter where they are located or if they are behind NAT firewalls. You can manage SSH sessions, web applications, databases, and even Kubernetes clusters you can protect with two-factor authentication and audit logging. The free community edition can be installed completely self-hosted at no cost, while the enterprise version gives you additional 24-7 support and can connect to your existing identity management systems like an Active Directory. If you want to try it out, just use the referral link in the description down below. It's completely free and there's no sign-up needed somewhere. And if you want to integrate that solution within your business, business and companies just reach out to the Teleport team. Okay, so let's start with the first Linux distribution, which is a very solid option for any type of server, and that's Debian. Debian is existing since 1993, and its first stable release version came out in 1996. It's been around for quite a while now, and it's definitely one of the most popular Linux distributions. Debian's package management system apt provides an easy interface and tools to get Linux packages from the Debian repositories. There are three branches of Debian named unstable, testing and stable. To become part of the stable current release, package must have been reviewed for several months as part of the testing release. So this can be a pretty long time and results in a very solid system. So this is why Debian is often used for critical infrastructure where stability, reliability and security are big topics. You will see that often in the server space, used as a distribution for mail, web or database servers. But that also means that the release process for new applications and features can take sometimes pretty long compared to other distributions. And you won't usually have all the latest and greatest packages available on Debian. Of course, in case of any web servers or database servers, you really don't need always the newest versions. It's mostly okay to be a few versions behind. Stability is more important because you really don't want to run into any issues or bugs. So that's why Debian is loved by many Linux users as a very solid distribution. Debian offers three years of full support for each release, but there are also LTS versions existing at no charge, so this will extend the support to five years and sometimes even more. So one of the biggest differences between Debian and the other distributions we are talking about is that Debian doesn't have a massive company behind it. It is maintained by a non-profit organization that's today supported by over a thousand developers. So you also don't get official support contracts from the Debian team directly, though there are some third-party consultants mentioned on the official website. Of course, this doesn't really matter in all situations. So when you're just working on your own and run a few web servers, for example, you're just searching for a great solid system or you are in a company where you have an experienced and dedicated Linux team that can support it, Debian is always a great choice. However, for some businesses, this might be a major downside to not have these official support contracts. So if you're interested in those business services or you want newer packages and applications faster implemented in stable versions, there may be other and better alternatives for you out there. For me personally, this is a reason to not use Debian in most of my projects. Projects. However, I still use Debian a lot as a base image for Docker containers as it is pretty lightweight and solid and I usually don't need any newer software packages on them. So one of the most popular alternatives, if not the most popular Linux distribution is Ubuntu. Ubuntu was released in 2004 
And because it is based on Debian, it has a lot of similarities like the app package manager and other parts of the code base are the same. But some of the approaches of Ubuntu are very different from it. As Debian is maintained by a non-profit organization, Ubuntu is owned by a massive tech company called Canonical. And Canonical created Ubuntu as a human-friendly Linux distribution that's very easy to use for everybody on desktop, servers, IoT and also cloud. There are also many other desktop Linux distributions existing that are derivatives of Ubuntu. And that's why it's often seen as a pure beginner distribution that people just use on their desktop computers. But that's only half of the truth. Canonical is actually a pretty big player in the professional Linux field and they offer many services and additional products for enterprise companies and professional server environments. On their official homepage you can clearly see that there is a high focus on enterprise and developers, technologies like OpenStack, Kubernetes, IoT, enterprise and service as well. For example, paid support for physical, virtual and desktop installations. They also have other products to make management for cloud infrastructure in larger environments easier with Ubuntu Landscape and other managed services. So you can see that it's not that beginner desktop distribution that some people just want to let you know. It is a pretty solid choice as a Linux server distro for any size of the environment. Ubuntu uses the same package manager format like Debian, but it also adopts new packages and applications faster. Ubuntu comes in two different versions, the LTS and the non-LTS versions, and LTS stands for long-term support. Canonical releases a new LTS version of Ubuntu every two years, and between these LTS versions every six months there is an interim release of Ubuntu as well. So don't get this wrong, it is still very stable and supported for a long time, especially the LTS versions are supported for five years until you should upgrade to a newer version. For server build, I would definitely always go with an LTS version. You will get a very solid system with even newer packages than Debian, which is supported for five years. And there's always an easy upgrade path to new LTS releases of Ubuntu every two years. In my opinion, it is a great balance between stability and flexibility. Together with all the other support and services provided by Canonical, Ubuntu is definitely a great choice for any type of server and it is one of the most used Linux distributions everywhere, not just on servers but also on desktop computers, IoT devices, cloud instances and so on. And that's why you will find tons of tutorials and resources for Ubuntu installations online. And for me this is quite an important thing as when you are running into any issues, which you will on a Linux system from time to time, it it's great to easily find solutions online. So Ubuntu is actually my first choice when I install a Linux server for my personal projects because it is just a great system that's simple and easy, but I can do everything with it. And I always find help online when something does work. But of course, not everything relies on Debian and Ubuntu. There are also some other distributions in the server space that are very popular. And another big, if not the biggest player for professional Linux environments is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. While Ubuntu and Debian are very similar, Red Hat is very different from both. It is also around for a very long time. So the first version back in the days just called Red Hat Linux was released in 1994. It uses a different package manager in format than Debian and Ubuntu, which was specifically designed for it. The company Red Hat was acquired by IBM in 2019, which is a massive tech giant company. And since then, some of the decisions they made might have been influenced by this takeover. In my opinion, it seems like they want more than others to develop their own ecosystem. For example, they came up with some alternative solutions to Docker. For example, they developed Podman and other orchestration and automation tools like OpenShift and Ansible. And they sponsor one of my favorite Linux server management tools, the Cockpit Project, which is the default management utility on Red Hat Enterprise Linux as well. By the way, if you are interested in Podman and Cockpit, I've made a tutorial about it where I show you how it works on an Ubuntu server as well. On Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Red Hat based distributions, it works even better. So check it out, I've put you a link in the description down below. 
What is also pretty interesting is that Red Hat has its own Linux IT certifications you can get. So if you really want to become a professional Linux server admin, take a look at the Red Hat certifications. This can be very helpful if you want to apply for a job where the company is using Red Hat Enterprise Linux and having a highly respected IT certification in this field will definitely give you some extra points. It is also not free on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You need to pay for every server license with a subscription and every major release version will be maintained for 10 years. There are also other subscription plans that will offer you extended support. So that's why it is a very popular Linux distribution in data centers in large environments. But there's also an option to use a Red Hat-like distribution completely for free. The most popular one is CentOS. And CentOS was for years just the free variant of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So now in the recent past this has changed a little bit. Because Red Hat cancelled the support for the latest CentOS version 8 even before the end of life happened and they changed the release packages for the CentOS project completely. Now CentOS is not just the free variant of the rock solid system Red Hat, it is now the upstream distribution for it. So that means that every new packages and applications will be first released and tested on CentOS until they are declared as stable and implemented in the official Red Hat Enterprise Linux releases. So this made many people pretty angry, which is kind of understandable. And of course, it also makes CentOS not really a good choice for a production system anymore. However, there are some alternatives out there. Rocky Linux is probably the most promising one in my opinion, which is a free and open source community project created by the founder of the CentOS project. So it aims to be exactly the same as what CentOS was before it shifted the direction. So if you are in a business environment where you need the official support contracts, you likely will choose Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And if you think that you don't need this stuff, you simply use a Red Hat downstream distribution like Rocky Linux. And that's a really great choice for any type of server environment as well. So in the past I used CentOS, but now I'm probably going to install a few servers with Rocky Linux at the time when I record this video. This is still pretty new, but in my opinion the best option you have when you want to go with Red Hat-like distribution that is as reliable as Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but also available for free. Okay, so these were my favorite Linux distributions on servers so far. Just a few words to other distributions. Of course, as I said, there are many other distributions existing that I personally haven't really tried out a lot, but should also be great for servers. Like SUSE Enterprise Linux, which is owned by a German company. They also have an enterprise and a free version. And what is pretty interesting is that they acquired Rancher, a popular Kubernetes management platform in 2020. So this is also a very popular popular option and I probably will take a look at it at some point because it also seems quite interesting to me. Other alternatives are for example Oracle Linux which may be also a great alternative for the CentOS people and also Clear Linux which is made by Intel. So if you want me to take a look at some of them just leave me a comment and please tell me which Linux distributions you are using. Okay, so we have talked a lot about the different options you have, but which one is now the best? So which Linux distro should you pick for your servers? And I'll first tell you my personal decision, and this is very subjective. Again, I just like all of them. But when I would need to choose a winner, I'd probably go with Ubuntu, because it's for me just the best combination of available software and apps, stability and simplicity. But again, this is just my personal preference. If you're searching for a great Linux distro for your home lab or study, all of them are just great choices and you should try them all out, find out what you feel the most comfortable with and just go for it. But keep in mind that when you're searching for a Linux distro that you can use in your company or in any professional IT infrastructure, personal choice is actually completely unimportant. So here it really makes more sense to take a closer look at the solutions, the companies behind these distributions and which services and support contracts they offer you as a company and who you feel would be the better choice for a long-term partnership. Because in the end it's all Linux and open source, but the differences between these companies and distributions can have a huge impact on your business and workflows. So as always there is no clear winner that is best for everyone, it really depends on the individual situation. Anyway, I hope I could give you a brief overview and gave you some useful information about which options you have in general and what would make sense in my opinion to look at. 
And as always, if you want to watch more content and tutorials for IT professionals, then please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you even want to support my channel more, then take a look at the YouTube membership program. And as always, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I see you in the next video. Bye bye.